Hi guys, Putin here with Community Replay number 74. Now I'm horrific at pronouncing names, so if I get it wrong, I apologize. But I believe we have Mr. Uh, Irvin here in his Tier 10 Pan Asian Destroyer, the Yu Yang. Now as you can see, we are on North. <clears throat> it is Standard Beetle, and... What we're about to see is just solid, good, all-around uh, destroyer gameplay. Now, he did want me to point out that he is not running premium consumables because somebody forgot to enable auto resupply. Like, none of us have ever done that before when we have just gotten a ship. Uh, I do believe this is his second game. Uh, I believe, uh, but I do know he wanted me to point out that he forgot to enable resupply for his consumables. Now, the thing that makes the Pan Asians special are several, several things, actually. If you do run premium consumables, not only do you get an extra smoke, but I believe there is very little i'm not exactly sure on the downtime for your smoke because i ran from <clears throat> from tier eight on up uh the radar consumable uh that is the other thing that makes the pan asians special is they have the ability to run a radar obviously we can see he is not he is using smoke uh but the other thing is, as you can see there, he targeted the Fletcher with his torpedoes. Probably doing that to see if he was slowing down, speeding up to get an idea of what the Fletcher was doing. But as you saw with the torpedo indicator, it said impossible to hit. Pan Asians get deep water torpedoes. Now on the Yu Yang, the... Let's see, the, the torp detection for these, i.e. like one, these will be spotted without anyone running vigilance or hydro is 0.8 kilometers. These things, I believe, have a 13.5, 13.2 kilometer range. I believe it is five. And the other thing is the maximum damage is 1,900. Uh, these are pretty much gearing torps minus uh, the range if you are not running torp acceleration. Uh, for example, the gearing torps do the exact same amount of damage. With the torp acceleration is 13.2 with a detection of 1.7 kilometers. Now, as you can see, that a... Uh, you know, a really nice job opening up on the Fletcher there. He got a couple Torp hits on the uh, poor Musashi over there. Who, uh, oh, I, I guess he suspects he was dropping Torps on somebody else. But the other thing that I like what he's doing is he's staying in the area. The other thing that you guys can see is he constantly is going with his... Uh, looking at his torp tubes to see what people are doing if they're moving forward moving back turning uh you can get a lot better in the indication with your torp tubes uh well with these indicators than you can sometimes with just looking at the mini map i do believe these torps are sent against possibly the republic i'm not sure uh the replays kind of are well, they're really bad at showing uh, what you're actually looking at with your torp tubes. Uh, because if you've seen any of my replays, I usually stick on them a little bit longer. So people who are running priority target don't know when, I, when and if I did drop them. But he, was, uh, he did do a smart play and stayed in the area, took care of the Fletcher. The sooner you can take care of the other destroyers, the better off you are. The reason you are is because you get to go around and torp everything because there's no enemy DDs to spot uh, your torpedoes, especially for the Pan-Asians. Uh, 
Rhodes coming in, he takes one torpedo tube, near max uh, damage. But the other thing that makes the Pan Asian uh, torpedo special, besides uh, being deep water, with very low detection is they have a very high uh, flooding chance. They have a higher flooding chance than anyone else. But just to give you an idea of the damage for these torpedoes, like I said, the, uh, the Yu Yang and Gehring get the same amount uh, as far as damage. The Gehring's detection for his torp is 1.4 kilometers. Shimmy's detection is 1.7 with the 12 kilometer torps. I didn't look at all the shimmy torps uh, detection. I just went with the 12s because uh, that is usually what you're going to run into. But the shimmy will out damage you because the shimmy's max damage for his torps is 23,767. The Z52, you beat that by. Uh, you beat that by, let's see, it's 14,400 for the Z52. The. Grozovoy is 14.6, so, you're, you know, you're, you're doing decent damage, but, of course, you're beating everybody with the detection uh, ability of these torps. Now, as you can see, he's staying in the area, and he's keeping this rune spotted. Most people running German cruisers are running Hydro and not Defensive Fire. Now, the thing with like I was saying with these deep water torps is if your hydro is not running by the time you spot these it's too late you're eating one you're eating two if you're not already actively moving turning doing anything trying to anticipate torps it's going to be a little too late fortunately he misses the room with his torpedoes but he's staying in the area and something I tell Sneaky all the time, if you don't do it, no one else will. And considering nobody else is going to get any more shots on the rune, there's no point in sitting down there keeping them spotted if nobody's going to shoot it. So if you want something done right, sometimes you just got to do it yourself. Nobody was able to finish him off, so he opens up with his guns and starts just pounding him. Now, what I, I like what he's doing here is he kind of waited for the rune. To shoot, take a couple shots, turn back in to kind of commit. So, uh, while he does get in the smoke, he will have a couple seconds to uh, shoot at these. I do believe it's still 20 seconds uh, for the penalty. Considering the rune is still shooting, means this guy's going to stay spotted, even though he is in smoke because of the smoke changes, as he finishes off the rune. So taking a look at the Zao, nobody's been able to finish him off. He's in smoke, it's in range. You might as well shoot, you got nothing to do. You need this guy dead so you can move on and continue on trying to torp things, shoot things, uh, just go around uh, harassing everybody. Spotting targets uh, for the friendlies too. Smart enough to back up to realize that the runes, I believe it's six kilometer torps, uh, we're possibly going to be coming. The Zao's 8 kilometer torps, they're never going to uh, make it so he doesn't have to worry about them. I do believe the Rune only gets one set of torps to where the Hindenburg, I believe, gets two. I believe the Hipper and Prince well, you can also get two on either side. So with the one set of Rune torps, he knows he's safe to move out. Now he has secured this flank. He's taken out three of the ships that were over here and the battleships have wisely uh well the enemy battleships have wisely moved on they have the ship lead uh this is standard battle so there is no horrific need to push this this notion that they need to push they need to push no it's standard battle you have the lead the enemy has to come to you. There are still three destroyers out there, even though one of them is a Kaba. Uh, and the Kaba is actually on the enemy team doing a very good job. He got up behind them, and he's just, you know, what doing what Kaba does, burning the world and pissing everybody off. Now, the reason I bring out that there's no need to really push, 
uh, especially with two of their destroyers still kind of in play, even though I believe they are over by worse, what is it, D now? Well, the 7 8 line, um, they, they have to come to you. They're either going to come in through, uh, what is that, the 6 line, or they're going to come up through the 8 line. Your flank over here is being covered by. Uh, the Yu Yang, I apologize if I said your name wrong. I'm just going to be safe and say Yu Yang. The, he's doing an excellent job. He's behind them. He knows the enemy destroyers are more or less up around the F line, I believe that would be possibly. The cop is on the other side of the map, so he doesn't need to worry about him. But because he was able to take care of the Fletcher, the Zhao, and the Rune on his side, he now has everybody's flanks. He's going to be able to keep all of these guys spotted. So there's going to be no way for these guys really to sneak up on the friendly team. Just need to take up positions to punish these guys uh, for when they do decide to uh, make their push. Don't know if the Kerr first had his Hydro running. But, but there is a chance he just didn't want to uh, push up in between those islands. But with the way he sent his torpedoes, uh, even uh, if the car first had his, his hydro running, he set them up very nicely for the Z-52. I'm sure the game plan wasn't to set them up for the Z-52. I'm sure the game plan was to delete the curve first. Now, the other thing is, with these being deep waters and stated earlier, is... With the uh, your inability to target uh, or actually hit uh, destroyers with your torps, is you have no fear of friendly destroyers running into your torps. We've all seen it happen before. Uh, you know, everybody gets a little bit excited. I do believe these torps are sent against the Frederick, even though the game is showing that he's targeting the Republic. I do believe he is trying to get rid of the Hydro, uh, which is a smart move because the one, well, the one weakness or the one hindrance to you would be uh, German battleships because they do have Hydro. Now, the public and the Frederick probably have some sort of secondary build. So if you're able to smoke up uh, and just shoot at things, the worst thing you want to do is see a German battleship with a lot of health barreling down on you, because there's a good chance he is running his Hydro. Next out the Frederick, the Frederick didn't even bother to turn, and that's one of, uh, that's one of the things I was saying, or the nice thing is about the Pan-Asians, is once you spot them, it's too late, you just accept your fate. Uh, if Frederick had a Hydro, probably would have spotted these, maybe done something. Uh, but let's Hope to God that the Frederick didn't have his hydro running at the time. Now that is kill number four, and uh, Yu Yang here is doing an excellent job, and I do believe this is his second game in the ship. I know it is a recent addition to his uh, harbor uh, because he did uh, point that out to us. But what he's going to do is... Continue playing smart. There's, while well, the enemy shimmy is on camp, and actually the best guy to deal with the shimmy would be the Z-52. He points this stuff out in chat. Uh, he's active in chat. He's doing everything he can to help his team win. He's doing everything he can to help these guys succeed as far as, hey, can you do this? Can you do that? Uh, and... You know what, sometimes you just need that. If, if somebody's uh, doing this in chat, you know what, hey, you know, look, look at this, look at that. Maybe he's not trying to be an asshole. Maybe he's just trying to uh, point something out if you didn't know. Now, if, you know what, you did know, just hit the F4 key. Just give a quick, you know what, no problem. I, I understand. But what he's going to do is, you know what, get on camp. He's still keeping these uh, two battleships spotted. <clears throat> spotted. So if the, with the Z finishing off the shimmy, 
uh, just by taking up this position and keeping these guys spotted means that the Z can actually um, get behind an island or smoke smoke up and keep getting the cap resets. Now, I'm not sure why the battleships have not turned in. I do believe his torps have passed them already. Uh, maybe they just passed them and they're finally turning into it. But I like what he's doing here. He's hitting his smoke and rushing right towards the... Sorry about that. Rushing right towards the Baltimore to put the Baltimore into smoke. So we have multiple guns on the enemy. Uh, what is that? Kava? Now, I'm sure he saw the smoke cloud that is behind the island there. So, you know what, with all of that going on. Uh, he's got to know that, you know what, that destroyer is dead. And it couldn't be the... Uh, Kaba smoke. The, the Yamato finishes to finish off the Republic. Uh, so really, there's only one gentleman on cap. I do believe it's to uh, Musashi. But I like what he's doing here. He's just keeping the Kaba spotted. Not like it's a very difficult job to do, but he is doing it. He's not shooting his guns. He's just trying to let the cruiser do. Uh, do his job and help, you know what, at least get the gentleman low. Now, the cop is going to have no choice but to come and to uh, force his way onto this cap and try to, well, kill everything or at least get the resets and hope that your battleship can win the fight up north. The cop is pushing in on his position. Which means he's gonna eventually gonna have to shoot. There's no way he can torp him. You can see he's running away, but God, it's too fast. He opens up with his guns, and I do believe what we're gonna have is the uh, battleship die up north, the Kaba die at about the same time. I like how he switches to AP because Kabas do eat a lot of AP damage. The battleship dies. He's gonna get the Kaba when he switches back to HE for that. So now, guys, we're going to go check out the post better results and see how well he did. We've sunk an enemy destroyer. Excellent job on the Kraken Unleashed with the five kills and 133,000 damage. I like I was saying, I do believe he said this was his second game with a base experience of 2,000. Just want to point out yet yeah, once again that he forgot to use premium consumables. If he had premium consumables, he might have been able to utilize the smoke a little bit more. Not sure if that would have changed the way he played this game, but he played it very well. Torped things, burned things, shot things, took care of things when things needed to get taken care of. Now, we do love all of the replays that you guys do send in. The email for that is in the description down below. Please remember to compliment good teamwork, good team play. We are quick to report, slow to compliment. And on that note, guys, please hit the like and subscribe button and have a great day.